Oh, good morning to everybody. Good morning, sister. Good morning. I hope everybody is fine. Yes, yeah, sister. I hope it's great. I hope yeah, everybody so... is fine. Sister. Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Okay. All right. Please, can we have um group 11 to group 19? She send me hi to confirm their final work. Remember, if you did not send me your final work, that group will not be able to present. That is the rule. And the assignment was given to you long time ago. So it was not now. So please, let's take note. So I think last week, group 11 and 12, you sent me your final work. So group 11, please, are you online? Group 11, please, are you online? Yes, yeah, sister. Please project your slide. Hello, group 11, are you online? Okay, group 12. Hello, group 12. Yes, yeah, sister. Okay, group 12, I think group 11 is not ready. So please project your slide and let's proceed. Please, today I'm not going forward and coming back. Please. Hey, sister, please we are ready. And we don't have much time because I have more than 19, uh, nine slides to pick. So I can't wait for you to delay us. Please, let's take notice of it. Good morning, class. All right, so the person who wants to present, hello. I want hello, to sister. Uh -huh, put up your hands. I want to meet everybody so that you can we can enjoy the class. Yes, please. So that after that, I will do the own. I will move you. All right, please. You can you can continue. Dora, sister, thank you very much. <laughs> please, we are group loving. We are presenting on the role of a of the community health officer in maternal and neonatal health. Please continue. Oh, I is uh, okay. Please, our learning objective are uh, by the end of this presentation we will be able to define who a community officer is. Two, know what a community health officer does. Three, understand the role of the community health officer in maternal and neonatal health. Introduction. When we say community health nurse, it's a person who has gone through training and has been assigned to work at a community setting. That is from Wahima 2022, page 225. And also, the community health officer plays a crucial role. So when we say play a crucial role in maternal and neonatal health by overseeing and implementing public health policies and strategies. So a community health officer has been trained and undergone a two-year program or more than that to go into the community to work with the community members. And they also play a crucial role in maternal and neonatal health by implementing and seeing to it that all the public health policies and strategies are being maintained. Please continue it for me. So when we come to the role of the community health nurse, the role of the community health officer in maternal and neonatal health, one, they help in policy development. That is, the community officer play a role, crucial role in the policy development by providing insights into local health needs, gathering data, and collaborating with the stakeholders to formulate effective public health policies. They act as a bridge between the community and policy makers, ensuring that policies address specific health challenges and are culturally sensitive. So they try to develop and they try to make some policies that will help the community members. You can see the picture. They are trying to make some policies that will help the community members within their locality. Sister, please continue it for me. Point two, monitoring and surveillance. So when we talk about the monitoring and surveillance, they maintain some health indicators and early warning system to detect and respond to potential health trends from So they make sure there may be an outbreak of certain 
there may be an outbreak of certain condition, like at times chicken pox. So the community health officer may go into the community or within the community to see to it that the the way where um the entry of the condition that seems so they may quarantine some people within the community and to know that if this condition is by the people or it's outskirts the outskirts from the community. So we place they do the monitoring and they try to see to it that um the they quarantine the people who have get certain diseases. So this is the work of the community health officer. Point three, they promote health. That is health promotion. In view of this, the community officer may try to educate the people on the health promotion. That is, they play a crucial role in promoting health by, by conducting health education programs. Health education programs like maybe hand washing, maybe there can be a lot of certain conditions, chicken pulse, good nutrition, and other stuff to the community members. And also, they advocate for preventive measures and facilitate access to health services within communities. They focus on individuals and also community to make decisions about their health and well-being. So, point three, they also, they also advocate for resources to their community members. That is, the community health office also provides resources and location by assessing the community to capitalize their health issues and direct resources to interact with the greater community. It ensures that health care resources are distributed efficiently to address prevalent health concerns and promote overall community well-being. Serve as emergency preparedness. With this, they, they make some risk assessment and education to guys identify potential health risks in the community and assess variables to different emergencies, like the old age. You go to, like, when you go for the home visit, you can also go there to check. To check their HBM, BP, that is the blood pressure, to see to it that if anything, to see to it that they are in good health, that is the risk taking. So if you identify anything that is differential or anything that is not good to the person, you can refer the person from the community to seek immediate attention or immediate health care for the people. They also collaborate with advocacy. In view of this, the community officers serve as an advocate that they promote health awareness, encourage, encourage some preventive measures, and also ensure access to health care services within their community. They work to empower individuals and communities to make informed decisions about their health. And also, they help address health disparities, promoting health education, and collaborate to receive others to improve over all community health. Community health. For instance, um, like the, uh, we have a program that is going within the district. We have the safety net program. That is the age, the teenagers who get pregnant within 14 to 19 years. They have been modified a program for them. With this, the community health um, officer may proceed, go to the chieftaincy to tell them that there is program that is ongoing. And if a, a, teenage, preg a teenage girl gets pregnant, it's not necessarily means that you the, the teenager may be dropped out of school, but they can continue their education. And the education ministry is also aware of this program. They are also making some improvement that the other, the person who got impregnated can also attend school after delivery. And also they can engage themselves in certain activities that may help the, the teenager after giving birth. The person can proceed to any vocation that the person, he or uh, she wants to do.
That is the advocacy for the community health officer. Please, can we continue each other? They also do research and some innovations within the um, community. The community officer also play a role in promoting research and innovation within their community. They can contribute by staying updates on the latest healthcare trend, participating in continuous education, and implementing evidence-based practice. Additionally, they also foster collaboration with local healthcare organizations and academic institutions can also help facilitate research initiative that addresses community-specific health challenges. So with this, as the safety net program is going, I think it was a um, it was a um, someone knowledge or some research that went into the community that we have some teenager teenagers that get impregnated and they cannot further the education. Their parents and suck them from their homes to go and stay with their husband. And with this, I think as a community officer who went into this rich search to proceed so that the teenagers may get access to their vacation or to their school when they give birth. So with the research and um, innovation, it helps the community officer play a vital role in this situation. Please, we are done, and this is our references. Thank you. This okay, is thank you very that much. Um, that was for group 11. Please 11. send a question for group 11. Group 11, please go back to your topic. Please, any question for Group 11? Please, any question for Group 11, please. If you have any question for Group 11, please put up your hands. All right. I think there is no question. Okay, there is a question. Josephine. Okay, the hands is down. Agnes. Agnes, thank you. Yes, sister. Yes, please. Sister, please, I want to know, are the, uh, um, the community health officer, are they the same as the community health nurses? Yes. Okay, so that is over to you, group 11. Please tell anybody to answer Agi for us. She has asked a question, please. Those that your hands are up, you can unmute yourself and talk. Faustina, Judith, you can unmute yourself and talk. Hello. Please, group 11, can somebody come and answer the question? Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Please, we know uh, community health nurses are different from community health officers because when you are, when you are being a uh, named community officer, then it means you have, after school, you have gone through a special training which will help you to manage a community compound. So those who have gone through that training are called the community officers, but they are all community health nurses. Unless you've gone through that training before you become the community health officer to manage the CHIPS compound. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Rita. Okay, Rita is off. All right. Um, yes. Please, can you come around and answer the question because of time? All right, Dora. Dora.
Please, you can unmute yourself if we're a group member. You can unmute yourself and talk, please. So that we can proceed to group 11 at 12. Sister, good morning. Good morning. Please, I'm not a group member, but I want to contribute. Okay. Uh, when we talk of community health officer, Committee of Health Officer started as a committee of nurse, as Sister has said. But this person has worked for so many years and had his or her promotion and reached the status of an officer. Like we have a uh, staff midwife, a uh, senior staff, the midwifery officer. That is the way it goes. So it's like before you reach community health officer, you've learned a lot and then you can manage a facility, as sister has said. So it's committee of nurse that graduates or upgrade herself or himself in terms of promotion to reach that status. So reaching there, they know that you can manage a facility and manage it well before they hand it over to you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody wish to add up? If we're a group member, you please, please Rita. Okay, please Rita. Time. Rita. Sister, please, um, I beg to differ with the last submission. A community health officer, they started even with the community of nurses when they were in school, when the young first came. So they added the IMCI training within, then with the management of uh, home care and then antenatal services. So it doesn't come with promotion, but they added a curriculum to the training, whereby even right from school, you go into the districts, you have orientation, then you can go to your uh, chief zone. So community health nurses were reorientated, having additional training so that they can man facilities, not necessarily with long services, but additional training so that you can man a facility, as the earlier person said but not with a long, uh, long term or long uh, years of service. Thank you. The last person to add, patient. Yes, just as my sister said, um, it's just uh, additional training that is given to the community health needs. So somebody can even come today, but if they are sending you to a cheap compound or uh, where maybe you'll be the only one that they give you special training as to how to uh, manage uh, your facility. So it's not long service or knowledge. It's just additional training Why? that is the community health needs to equip her to be able to manage the facility. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So the question I'm asking is, is the midwife a community health officer? So, so some yeah, can be... because they can train the person for just only two weeks to be trained as a community health officer. So I'm asking, can a midwife be a community health officer? That is the question I'm asking. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Can a nurse, a gen can a general nurse be a community officer? Yes. 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 No. Yes. yes, I am an enrolled nurse, and yes, I, I'm also I also double yes, as a CO two. Can't be a CO two, but you can do the work of a CO two. So you are not a CO two. <laughs> they trained me as a CO two, gave me the certificate, so I'm a CO two. A CO two and an enrolled nurse too. I was an enrolled nurse, trained as a CO two, and now I'm a midwife. And still Please. double as a CO2. Sister, anybody with it? Yes, Rita. Rita. Sister, please. Um, if like you go to the uh, community, uh, the health center or the chief zone, and you have the organogram, okay, uh, the uh, midwife, it's it's on top. Or if uh, uh, there's a midwife there, it's on top of the organogram. But as somebody said earlier, she can play the role based on the training, but she's not an CHO. That CHO, community health officer, it's not her title. Yes. But she can do the services side. And enrollers can play the role 
or services. But that title is not his. That title is only for a community health nurse trained to be a community health officer. Okay. You are correct. All right. So my question has been answered. Any other more question before we proceed? Madam, you say your question has been answered. How, how she answered it, please, is it true or not? Which of them? The question I asked. Is it the, last question, the last question saying that it's only a, a, a community health nurse that is a CHO. Yes, but when you play the role, you can play the role. For example, when you go to most of the chief compounds, we have midwife as an in charge there. And the midwife is the one who is doing the community services and all those things. But the midwife is not a community health nurse, but you can play the role of the community health nurse. But sometimes but the CHO you is they train something. If they train you as a CHO, whether you're a midwife or any distance, you are the CHO, you are mining the place. Please, you are mining the place, but that doesn't make you a community health nurse. Are you with so me? So the CHO is not only for community health nurse. If you are trained as a CHO, you are trained as a CHO, whether community health nurse or not, you play your role as a CHO. Yes, you play your role, but that is not your title on the on, on your pay slip. Guess this once and for all. Everybody can be a CHO as far as you are a health worker. Madam, but it's not on their, their yeah, pay slip. Uh, community health nurses too. It is not on their pay slip. I know it is not on their pay slip. But as far as you go to the community, when you go to most of the cheap compounds, we have midwives, we have nurses, we have so many failed people playing the role of the CHO because you have received a special training to do that. And sometimes the community health nurse, like somebody said, you it doesn't mean that you should be having a long service. If you're a community health nurse and you're, maybe you are being posted to a chief zone, sometimes you will go there and there will be no midwife. There will be no midwife at the chief compound, but you will be trained to conduct antenatal services and you'll be trained to conduct a delivery. That doesn't make you a midwife because you have received that special training. Let, let's be clear on this. Because you have received a special training and you can conduct minor, minor cases of antenatal cases and delivery. And I remember when the training came, I have really, I've forgotten about the year, but when the training came, and uh, community health nurses, were, those were in the cheap zone, they were trained, they were trained. And I think because of that, because most people show interest to come and do the post nap nap midwifery. Because that time, most community health nurses were picked to train how to conduct antenatal services, how to conduct uh, simple or uncomplicated, or I don't know how to, normal deliveries in the community where there is no midwife. But if we do those services, it doesn't make you a midwife. And I remember they were encouraged to come and do the post nap nap, a post dark nap. That is the post basic midwifery. Because it was like, it was an opportunity for you to come and do that course with ease. And I remember one day, one of my students, the post nap nap student, when I was teaching them normal labor, I remember one person who said, sister, I've been a CHO and I've been doing this. I didn't know midwifery. When you come, you have to do proper anatomy into details, abnormal, we have normal and abnormal labor. Hey, sister, had I knew, I wouldn't have come and we were all laughing over it. So please, let's make it clear and for all. The person who asked the question, Asana, please, are you with me? Madam, you, you, for the sake of time, let's go on. No, no, Thank let's you. clear it off. Let's, it's not for the sake of time. We are, all, no, we are here but, Madam, Like, uh, what I'm saying is that a CHO is standing on its own. And any category of staff, when can be trained, trained, can be trained, can be trained whether, whether you are a role, role, whether you are yes. a midwife, it's just uh -huh. a fine So if they, if they training. train you and you are now the, the, the CHO, mm. uh, no community health nurse will come and say, I'm supposed to be a CHO, but because I was not there, you are trained, now I have come, give me my place. No. No, no, you no, that one. No, 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 nobody, nobody will do that. And the that title CHO so is not uh -huh. like what I want you to understand. Like, like, like what, what I understand is that the title CHO is not for only community health nurses. Yes, it's for and everybody. that is what 
Yeah, and that is that yes, is why yes. I asked that is why uh -huh, I asked okay. the question. That is why I asked the question. Can a midwife, if we get it right, that is why I asked the question. Can a midwife and general okay. nursing be a CA2? You remember I asked okay. that question. And yes, I said it yes. has been answered. As far as you receive the training, yes, you receive the training to conduct, for example, I'm a midwife, I'll do there is no community health nurse there, so I'm the one doing immunization. Though part of the training for midwife, we have done immunization and all those things and you are doing all those services doesn't make okay. you a midwife a community health nurse let's yes. get it once and for all it's true then, at the same time i am a community health nurse and i'm managing a chip zone there is no midwife so i have received that cho training no matter your rank you have received the training that you can conduct minor cases of normal delivery or antenatal services. And when it's become even complicated or when you identify case, you refer to the next level. Doesn't make you the community health nurse a midwife. Yes. So let's get it clear once and for all. But yes, everybody madam. in every profession can be trained as a CHO. Yes. Thank you. Can you. Go to, and you can even go to a chip zoom and there is no midwife. There is no nurse, but there is an enrolled nurse there. And that enrolled nurse can receive that training and play the role of the CHO. And I remember I said, when those training came, it was even giving them an opportunity that when they come and do the top up post nap nap post basic window free, it's an advantageous. So as for the CHO, everybody can play that role. By you playing that rule doesn't make you that like this or that. And it doesn't mean that if we are a midwife there and we are playing the role of all those things and a community health nurse come, you should come and fight with you that I want to do this and I want to do that. No. But we all know that if we are managing a chip zoom and there is a midwife, if somebody talk about the hierarchy and the community have come, the community have not come, come and work under the midwife. In the same way, for a midwife and you have a physician assistant, you, the midwife, will work under the physician assistant. So let's get it clear once and for all. I hope now everybody is clear. We can proceed. Yes, madam. Thank you. Yes. Are you sure you are clear, Asana? <laughs> How clear, madam? <laughs> Is everybody clear? Because this topic, people normally get confused who a CHO is. And I hope everybody, if you are not clear, come out, let me answer the question. Because I remember when the training came, at first of all, I have forgotten about the year when we were training people, uh, basic, then the B month came, basic obstetric emergency. And I think it's the next topic, a group will present on it. And then the safe motherhood came, then from the safe motherhood, we have the BMON, the emergency, obstetric emergency, and all those training came to the system. And I think from here, we are going to pick them and understand them well, because people don't understand the BMON, the basic obstetric emergency, and then the comprehensive obstetric emergency. Then the safe motherhood. So please, if you are not clear, come and come and let me make things clear. So in summary, everybody can. That is why the topic is the role. Look at the topic, the role of the CHO. So everybody can play the role of the CHO when you receive the training. And I remember after the training, you are given a certificate. And I don't know what is happening now. And I remember those days, you were given an incentive. So I don't know whether the incentive are still there. And you have community volunteer, uh, volunteers to support you. You were given an incentive for playing that role, a special package. But I don't know now whether the, those special packages are still in the system. So I don't know whether you, you are in the field. Are we still having that special package for the city? Yes, madam. It's still the there. motorbike. Not only the motorbike. But there were so special packages for you doing extra work. 
It's not more the training Kura, is, is not there like that. So once you just finish school and you come, they'll post you to go and work. But because now, you see, when it came, it was not like somebody answered. Now it has been added to the curriculum. So we, we know that you have been trained in school already. So just after school, if we are sent there, it's it, 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 it's normal. Sister. Just that, yes. Sister. No, this year at my facility, mm -hmm. we're having a RCN, the the, the degree, the diploma seating. She went okay. for CHO, she went for CHO training for two months. Sister, they didn't give her anything for two months, no. but they gave her a certificate. Like the pack, I'm I'm saying the package is no more. They gave it's her no her certificate, more. yes. But she she according to her, she they, they told her she should come back to her facility, but they will get in contact with but nothing the package, happened. The, 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 those uh, i don't know those those we have online can i get somebody old people in the system because i left the world for 10 years now when i left the world it's 10 years now so anytime i'm talking about what is underground i don't want to i remember those days the packages was not only about money i remember i check it's, it's a long time but those days if i can my memory set me right oh. You were given either a bicycle or motorbike, yeah, and then there was a little to do something. Oh, yeah. I have really forgotten about the package those days. So, do we have anybody who is an OCHO? Anybody who is an OCHO? Hello? Do we have anybody who is an OCHO? Please, um, Group 11, take off your slide to make a way for Group 12. Sister, yes, sister Rita. Sister, yes, it, it was a bicycle that was given to us. And I Please. remember those that the community was supposed to motivate you. I have really forgotten about the the the, the package. Was it sister? Yes. Please, uh, at my former place, they mm. give they will give you a uh, gas every month. They will fill your cylinder for you. And then the district assembly also gives some rice and oil packages with provision every month. Yeah, I know that it was to be internal something something. I don't really want. I remember those days. I because my memory didn't say. I I said me right now. I don't want to mention anything. But I know there was an internal motivation. There was, but okay. Is there anybody to add up? To the motivation sister yes dear. please um, yes please at my end what we used to get was even though the, the apart from what the community members were um, obliged mm -hmm. uh, were to give you they were to give you some support in terms of your stay there to make sure your stay in the community you are very comfortable but then the system also gives you money. The money doesn't come directly as in that it is for you, but depend you went to organize activities. And then with that activity, the money comes in excess and you are not asked to refund the money back again. So the community support was there. Then they give you a motorbike and make your accommodation very comfortable. And then the money aspect too comes in. That was okay. what my district we were doing. But, but I know with time, as times things are changing, I remember I told my students that when I came to the NMTC back in the 2000s, and I remember during my time, uh, with the, they were even giving students provision and they were laughing, hey sister, they were giving you provision. I said, yes. I remember our time, manly provision. And then I remember wow. our time, do you see that was the time that I started training diploma midwives. And I remember my time too, they will be there and we have people coming in like the uh, non-government organization like the CHAG. Most of them were coming in to beg us that they want to sponsor us and pay our fees so that 
when we complete school, we will come and work for them. When I tell them, say, hey, sister, is that so? Hey, sister, then now, if we're having this opportunity, then some of us who cannot pay our, our fees, hey, sister, then at that time, then you people get it to enjoy. But I know that things are changing. So we don't expect those incentives to still be there. But what I would say, um, what I would say is that midwives, wherever we find ourselves, even if the motivation is no more coming, let's try and do our best to save life, to save life, to save life. So um, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. I think uh, it's not everybody who is still receiving the incentive, but my sister, see, let's try our best and then save life. Okay, so my 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 conclusion for the group, my conclusion for the group is now the group. The problem I have with you is your interest referencing, your definition of a CHO. Please take note. You 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 put my name there. That by him out two thousand and something. I reference someone. So if you want to reference me, then you have to reference the person I reference first. So for example, I reference somebody using that definition. So if you go to my book or my bibliography or the reference list, you see the, the name of that person. So maybe for example, uh, I reference, I'm giving an example, Asari. So you, if you state me, you want to bring me, then you have to Asari 2001, as cited by Bwahima in community midwifery. Yeah, then it will come in. Or as cited by Bwahima 2021 or 2022. Because I cite that person. That definition is not coming from me. So you can't reference me straightforward. I hope we are learning the AP. We are trying the, our best. So please, let's take note of that. All right. Thank you very much. Group um 12, please, are you ready? Group 12? Yes, sister. Please do yes, the slideshow. Sister. Do your, go and click on your slideshow, and then we can start. Then the person will be presenting, she kindly put her hands up so that I can remove her. No, go down where we have the minus and negative. Are you there? No, not on the slide. Do. Hello? Sister. It's not on the slide. Have you seen where we have the, go down, down. Down of your laptop where we have the minus and the plus. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's wait for her to project. I'm I think he has closed it. Please, who is projecting? Sister, I'm doing it. This is the time. Hey. That's all right. <laughs> Sister, please, is it okay? Okay, let me go and look. At, have a look. No, don't, don't come down. How do we say it's simple? Come down to where you have the minus and the plus. For the zooming. The zooming. Yeah. Have you seen where we have the zooming? Yes. Uh -huh. No, don't zoom it. Listen to me. Have you seen that small boss before the minus? Yes, please. Click on that. That's the slideshow. Okay. All right, so please, the person should put up her hands and then move everybody. Okay, Agatha. Yes, sister. Okay. You can start. I good wish you good luck. Good Thank morning. Thank you, sister. Please, we are group 12, and we are presenting on um, sister, the next one, notification and registration of birth. Sister, the next one. Our objectives. Are they... No, please, back to the objectives. 
our objectives at the end of the presentation, the class will be able to define birth notification and registration, state the importance of birth registration, and identify the advantages of birth notification and registration. Birth notification and registration. Birth notification is the insurance of a form confirming the occurrences of birth of a child by an appropriate authority. But with this definition, we are saying that um, when we say birth notification, it's an insurance given to a child who is um, born as an appropriate um, by an appropriate authority. The birth registration is the process recording a child's birth or exist existence, which provide legal, legal recognition of that child's identity. It shows legislation record of where the child was born and who, or, who his or her parents are. UNICEF 10th December 2019. This is what we have been doing in our awards. When um, a client delivers the records we keep in our birth register, that is the legal document we are keeping. So that in case um, there is anything, when the parents come back to know maybe the birth of the child or know the, um, the sex or something like that, we can go to our registration book to give the person um, that information. So that is why um, UNICEF introduced the birth registrar in our words. And also they have their book, the maternal book that we put all those records inside as soon as the client delivers. So that these informations will not get missing or we will not lose them. As in the, in the olden days, they were not keeping much records. So their date of birth and much of their birth information are lost. Please, the next one. Requirement for registration of birth. So what do we need to register a child when the child is born? And we are saying that the maternal and child health record book, as I said earlier, we put those information in their uh, mother's maternal record book. Then the child's name. Normally, when a child is born, um, some parents are able to give you the names. Others are unable. So normally, we use the mother's name, baby, um, akosia men. Um, with the introduction of the limbs, now we have um, a column where we put all this birth information, and it will even give the 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 newborn a number. The newborn will get a number on the limbs. Please, somebody is writing on the screen. Sister, can you do anything about it? Because it's covering the... Gloria, Gloria. Let me look at the name. Oh, it's too bad. Gloria. Yes, it's covering the way. Gloria. I don't know. Um, so we have, I think it's a little bit. I think I have. Hey, even this UC is no more online. So let me continue. So we yeah, have the dates. Oh, hold on, hold on. This UC is not online and I'm not recording. Please, who is writing on the screen? Uh -uh. Sister, the recording is on. Is that so? Yes. By who? I don't know, but I can see the record. But I can't see because I wanted I wanted to log out and then because you can't see. But why that I can't see? I can't see. Please, what do we do about it? I don't know how to. How do we mm -hmm. get rid of the screen? Reproject again. Mm -hmm. Okay, please, please don't write on the screen, okay? If not, we can't enjoy the presentation. 
All right. So we are continuing. So we, right. we talk of the dates, date of birth and place of birth. So we, we put in all these informations so that in case the mother comes back for any information, as I was saying, on the limbs now, all these informations are logged in. And it helps um, we, the midwives, we are also even able to generate a number for the baby. So now when the baby comes, in, in case the baby is sick and comes on admission, we no more take care of this baby on the mother's um, folder but a folder is created for the baby already. Then the parent details like the names, age, occupation of the mother and the nationalities. As we know, if you are born in Ghana um, and your mother is a Ghanaian, definitely this child is also a Ghanaian. And we have a copy of the old birth certificate. This old one wasn't biometric. It was just a written document given to the uh, mothers, and when it when it gets missing, that is all. There is no way to retrieve your um, information. But we have the new one. Please, sister, show them the new one. Okay. This is the new biometric birth certificate. With this one, um, when you are going, in case there is any issue, and your birth certificate is misplaced or you've missing, it's missing. Um, when you go to the birth and death registry, because it's biometric, they are able to retrieve all your information for you. Unlike the old one, which when it gets missing, nothing is done about it. But with this new one, we are fortunate that in case you need it back, you just go, um, I think they'll collect some money. But in the first, um, at birth to, is it three or four months? There is a free birth certificate done for you. But when you misplace it and you are going for it, that one day I know that it comes with the cost. So this is the advantage we are having. But at least your informations are still intact with the biometric own. So we are moving on. Advantages of the birth certificates. I think I've said a lot already. A birth, a birth certificate safeguards children's rights, providing identity, citizenship, and legal protection against violence and abuse. As I said, if your mother is a Ghanaian, automatically you are also a Ghanaian. So with this, with your birth certificate, it can talk for you, it can fight for you that, hey, I'm a Ghanaian. So don't treat me as I'm not a Ghanaian. So if, um, let's say, a Lebanese person comes to um, Ghana here and give birth, automatically, because the, the, the child was born in Ghana, the person will be a Ghanaian. The person will attain the birth certificate as a Ghanaian. So, so in case um, it comes, this child grows up and needs a position or something, they're saying, hey, you, you are not a Ghanaian. With the birth certificate, this child can... Um, let's say, uh, defend him or herself that, no, I was born in Ghana, so I have your birth certificate, therefore I'm a Ghanaian. So the next one, birth registration, aid government in allocating funds for important developmental programs like immunization, immunization and education. Yes, you know, we keep records, as I said earlier, the birth uh, registration book we have, Every month we do our monthly returns. So with this one, they are able to know that at the end of the year, or even in our district, at the end of the month, um, this uh, hospitals here were able to get this number of deliveries. Therefore, our immunization um, drugs or vaccines, we should increase it because as we can see, the number of births is increasing. So it's, they are based on it to do to initiate certain policies for us. And they, they can also say that um, with this increment in the deliveries, there will be much midwives or more midwives will be needed in our uh, districts to the various hospitals to help um, with the work. So with the increase in delivery and decrease 
they are also able to, the government is also able to do something for the country and even the uh, midwives and those working. The birth certificate pr protects immigrants and refugees, children from family separation, trafficking and illegal adoption. Registration and certificate of birth Ghana, you 2015. So this, this was where we got it from. Um, we are saying that this birth certificate protects the immigrants, those refugees. When they come and as I was saying, they are also, uh, fortunately for them, their mothers were pregnant and they are born here in Ghana. They are also fortunate to be Ghanaians because they are able to attain our birth certificates. So with the birth certificate, when it comes that all refugees should go back, this child can bring out the birth certificate and say that, oh, for me, I was delivered here. I was born here. So I'm a Ghanaian. So please, you cannot tell me to go back. I'm now part of you. So with this birth certificate, they are able to speak for themselves and they are able to become part of us. Sister, let's move on. So we are, we are moving on to the importance of birth registration. What are the important? Some of the important are creation of identity. We are able to know our identity. And um, even some of us, we want our children to be born in the UK, in the US and so on, just to attain their birth certificate. So it creates the, their identity. Me, I was born in UK, so I have their certificate. I have their this, this, so me, I'm not a Ghanaian, or me, I'm a Ghanaian because I have Ghana birth certificates. Access to healthcare. They are able to, as I said, on the limbs now, fortunately, we are able to create a folder for the newborn, even born on, born today, a day old baby. We are able to create a folder for that baby. So when the baby is coming for um, sick health or a sick within the first week or whatever, this baby has no difficulty. Now we are going to create a folder for this child. No, the folder is already created. So access to healthcare is very easy and accessible. And they also have the rights. They are by, by their birth certificate, they are Ghanaians. So they have the every right in Ghana here to do whatever we are doing, to occupy any position, because by their birth certificate, they are Ghanaians. Protection from abuse. As I said earlier on, if anybody wants to intimidate them or anybody wants to make them feel that you are not part of us, with their birth certificates, they are able to speak for themselves because automatically they have a um, Ghanaian birth certificate, therefore they are Ghanaian. So no, no forms of abuse, nothing. It's from UNICEF. Sister, please get back for me. This is from UNICEF 2019. So thank you very much. This is the end of our presentation. Our references, our references. And the names of our group members. Sister, please, we are done. Thank you. Hello, sister. Okay, thank you very much. That is for group 12. Oh, please, any questions for group 12? Okay, so I have some hands up. Okay, so let me pick them. The first person, I think let me do the distance so that, um, is it, please, Agatha, your hands is up. So I've added you to those who have questions. Patient and Faustina, please, you can talk. Patient and Faustina, your hands is up. Okay. Uh, good morning, sister. Good morning. Yeah, sister, please, mine is a contribution. I, I, I learned that the, the first one, the small one, it, it has not stated in the system. They are still doing it. 
and then the uh, the biometric one too is in the system. So I think they are doing both, but just that the small one, it is done for them for free, but it's not even free like that because our place they charge density for that. And then within within one year, when you are able to do the biometric, it is I think fifty cities. But after one year, they charge the normal price. So that is the reason I can say about it. Thank you. Hello, sister. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Sandra. Okay, it's not Sandra. Uh, Sandra, please, your hands are up. Sandra, I'm patient. Please, you can talk. Sister, sister yes, please, it's an addition. Yeah, okay. hello, sister, please. Good morning. Okay, please, please 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 Okay, please. Yes, we I, are, think we I are, want to ask whether there is an expiry date for the registration, the birth registration. Let's say if you have a child and there is a period within which you have to register, and that if that period expires, you can't register or something like that. Thank you. All right. Please, were you, is it a contribution? Sandra. Okay. Patient. Patient, Wahima. All right. Please, another question. Hello, sister, sister. please, can you sister. hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Uh -huh. So please, please, I was asking a question as okay. to whether there is an expiry date or a period within which you have to register your child. And then even uh, if that period el elapses or expires, you can't do again or it comes with a penalty or some terms and conditions. Thank you. Thank you. I hope somebody has yes, answered that please. question. Somebody answered no, that please. question. please. Somebody has answered it, but we let like please the person should come again. Sister, it was the question. Yes. Please Sandra. um I'm answering here. Okay. The period for the registration, it is from zero days to one year. It is free. But after the after the one year, when you go and the child is one year and even a day, you are going to pay for the biometric, it is hundreds of this. And for the old one, the old registry, the old one that we write, it is temporary. Even if you do it at your end, they come there because for now we have people who come from the death, um, death registration office to our various facilities where they, they do the WC, uh, the CWC. Always, they, they have people who come there and do the registration. For that place, even if your child is zero day or two days, they will collect money because they came from their office with um, transportation to come and do it for you at your convenient place. So they will collect money, but it differs from every person who goes to any different facility. But if your child is within zero days to one year, it's free when you go to their office. Thank you. This is your, uh, I think the person who asked the question. Patient, your question has been answered. Patient. Okay. Uh, Fuse, is it Fuse? Is this uh, Lamisi? It's a long time I heard the name Lamisi. <laughs> Hello. Please. Uh, you are not be contributing. Okay. <laughs> Please, uh, if I'm born in Tamale and I'll find myself in Kumasi, can I do my biometric certificate there? Okay. Or I need to go back to Tamale and do it? Please, all the group members, you can come and contribute to. Because... 
Hello, sister. Hello. Yes. Hello, sister. Please, one after the other. Okay. Mm. Please, we are with you. Hello, Hello sister. sister. Please, I'm a group member. Okay. Please, you can you can do it at any way you want to do it, providing with your Ghana card it's with you. You can do it. And if you are from Tamale and you are you you are, you want to do it in Kumasi, you can go to the office and do it. You you go along with your Ghana card. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sister. All right. Thank you. Please, you can do it anywhere you want. Please, can you, you put your hand down so that I know those who want to ask questions? You can do it anywhere you want. But the only thing is the please, place please. that you were you were put to bed, that is where it will change. You no use Kumasi on. You use where you were put to bed. But you can do it anywhere of your choice. Okay. Hello, sister. Yeah, the last person, Anita. Hello, sister. Good morning. Morning. But sister, please, in, in our region, it, it's not like that. When when you maybe they gave birth to you in Kumase and you come to Ahafu to come and do the birth, they will say they will say no. They say you have to go to where you were, where you were, where, where the baby was born, and do the birth set there. This Some is the biometric <laughs> or the biometric birth set. Yes, they always tell, tell them to go to where they were born to do it. They shouldn't do it. You can't give birth in Kumasi and come and do the birth set in Ahafu. Yeah, they don't do it like that. Yes, yeah, true. It's my, first time. it's my first time of here. Is there anybody with a current yes. information on that? Yes, Ma <laughs> madam, please. It yes. happened to be that way. Um, it's true. You can't do it at any region of true. your choice. You have to go to where you were born, the region that you were born. To do it, I'm in Takrade. I went to Takrade uh, birth registration to do my biometric. I was told to go back to what to do it. So you can't do it at any region of your choice. No, you do it at the district where you were born. The district where you were born. That's even you district, not region. Not region. It's the district. same thing. Whether district or region, you can't. You have to go back to where you were born. The, whether that district or that region. Let's say from Wa, I'm in Takrade. I can't do it in Takrade. I have to go back to Wa and, and go to the district and do it. But even I in Ashanti, a, region. a biometric. Even in Ashanti, the region, biometric. Just go to hello, hello, sister. sister. Please, I'm a member of Group Twelve. Okay. For the, um, for the birth certificate, unless you want to change the place you were giving birth, you can't um change. It. You can go to Ashanti region and do your uh, birth certificate there. Biometric there, unless you want to change the place you were delivered. So maybe if um you were delivered at a northern region and you are in um Ashanti region right now, you can't go back there. If you want to do your certificate, you will choose whether you do it at northern region or you do it at the Ashanti region. But if you do it in Ashanti region, exactly. your place of birth will change. It will change. Change exactly. So, you maybe you were uh, giving birth at the uh, Northern Region Government Hospital. Since you did your biometric in Menchia District Hospital, they will tell you that choose a hospital in Kumase that you think you are okay with, maybe South Central or Menchia or so the place of birth will change. That that, that is, is some, I'm here to investigate. Hello, that, sister. That, that is dangerous. So, hello, yes, yeah, sister. It's not true because supposing you want to travel mm. and the, the embassy want to do an investigation at where you were born, mm. and they go, you were delivered, you were delivered at a uh, Mensha hospital, and you said uh, they should uh, put a uh, go to hospital. When they come to go to hospital, your information is not there, so it will be wrong on your part. The information is not there, that is why they insist. That go to where you were born and do the uh, uh, birth certificate there because of all those issues. So if you want to travel, sometimes the embassy come and investigate whether it's true you were born there. So if you don't do it that way, it's illegal. Ah, so that one is not true. But what this is saying is wrong. That was friend. what I was told. That is what they told me. Sister, I me, mean, my own is different. I, I I delivered my baby in in Bole and went to Y and did the birth registration smoothly. 
They they asked me the place of birth. When I mentioned, they kept it there. And when he came, he came as if I, I delivered the baby. Like the best set was done in Bole. In Bole. And they gave it to this me, biometric registration. I know now it's a biometric. Biometric so, can do it anyway. This is the place, can I explain? All right, the last person. This can I explain? Ah, uh, uh, Sylvia. Yes, sister. Please, the issue is um, when you want to go to another place to do the registration, they normally don't allow. With the exception of some of them, they have um, the codes to other places. So if they have the place, uh, the code to where you were delivered, then they can do it for you in another region using the code to where you were delivered. That is what they do. Personally, I am I experienced that. I went to. Network. Sylvia, your network is off. Christian, I heard your voice. Christian. Right. Okay, please group 11, take off. Um, 12, please take off your slide to make your way for group 13. Christian, I heard your voice. Yes, sister. Christian, yes. Yes, sister. Yeah, I wanted to contribute concerning the registration. Mm. Yeah, uh, what the lady they were saying, some of them are saying the right thing because when you were born in maybe Accra and you are in Upper West, you want to do the registration. The place of birth will change. The place of birth will change. Autom it will change. Unless, if you want to maintain a place of birth, unless you go to Accra, then you do it in the district that you were born. Yeah. All right. So I'm here to find out because he, I know it's a biometric. So um, others are saying the place of birth will change. Others are also saying so. The group, group, yeah. group, you did a group presentation, so I know you went to the group. The group, what did you find out? Because the group, you did a presentation, sister. So I know sister, you visited, sister. Them. Please, and, and this is Sandra, okay, 12 member. Please, mm. um, from what. We, we we investigated about you can do it everywhere if the oh. thing is if you go and meet um someone who wants to stress you they are those who will be telling you go to where you were born do it because it's biometric and me personally i've done some attacker whilst i was born in obwase and it, it, there wasn't any complaint about it. And they didn't tell me to go back to Obwasi to go and do it. They collected every info and they did it for me. So from what I know and what we got to know, you can do it anywhere, provided you go and meet someone who is willing to do it for you. You know, oh. um, nowadays, nowadays people will be asking for money and all those stuff. Please, that is what I know. Hello, sister, please, I want to answer the question. Please, so do they change your place of, like, the hospital you were born? Do they change it? No, please, they didn't change it. They asked for everything, and we gave them everything that they needed. They didn't tell us to go back to Obwase to come and do it at Obwase. Oh, okay. One, one lady yes. was saying that uh, the hospital that you are comfortable with, you choose that one. That one was no, my problem. No. No, mm. they didn't. They didn't ask. And so, even if you do it at Obaye, you do it at Aka. Sometimes, even if you do it, you were born in Obwasi, and they take those things. The district take it to region for it to be endorsed with the seal and all those stuff. That's the difference between the written one and the biometric one. There is a seal there that gives you an so they will take the, the original number. details. So they will yes. take the original details. They won't, okay. they won't they, yes, they will do everything as you were born in Obwase. The region is Kumase. 
yes okay. that's how yes that's how it says they don't change the, if okay. you go and meet the, the new people there they won't okay. stress you okay thank you you are Please, welcome. your hands are up uh rebecca Usu esther are you asking a question Yes, sister, please. This is Gifty. My hand is also up. I wanted to talk about the birth registration issue. I, I, um, I when I was in the, I, Abigail, Gifty. Uh, yes, sister. This is Gifty. Hello, All sister. Right. Yes. Hello. Yes, sister, please. Yes. This is Gifty. Okay. Uh -huh. For me, um, when I was born, I, I, I had a small one which was um, when I was going to the nursing training college, it was um, tattered, uh, like it was torn and all that. It wasn't laminated. So I had to do a new one. And I was in Accra. I wasn't born in Accra, though. I was born at Sugarcoffee Hospital. So when I came to, because I'm in Accra, I grew up in Accra. Because I'm in Accra, I had to do a new one. So my dad actually was the one who did it for me. He sent it to Mamo B Polyclinic, which is now Mamo B General Hospital. And they did it there, but they changed the hospital name to Mamo B General Hospital. So currently, that's what is on my, my but, best but set that I'm that, using, the biometric the, one. Uh -huh, yes. but the, the problem is that you were not yes, there. Yes, the biometric one. You are not the one who Yes, did I wasn't it. there. I was in school. Let me tell you one funny thing. I remember uh, my mom asked my dad to go and do my birth set. And then that was back then. Okay. And when my dad went, they asked of my name. And then my dad was just standing there. You know, those, uh, my mom is now 85 years old. And so when they asked my dad, my dad couldn't get it. It was he, 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 he my dad said, and he put my mother's name there in the website for me, just like the mother, my mom. So when the website came, then my mom said, ah, but when you were going, I told you this is her name. My father said when he got there, he has forgotten. So it's the same thing. Yours, yours is just like mine. So we don't know what happened when your father got there. Maybe they asked your father and your father said you were born there. I don't know. The person who asked the question. So when I grew up, I have to go back and change my birth set. That one, it was the old type. Lucky for me. So when I was doing the biometric, I have to use my name. Uh -huh. So that is certain things can happen that way. Maybe I because I we're not there. Uh, Gifty, are you with me? Okay. But I was so. Yeah. With this um, David issues, David David issue. That's why now this birth certificate is becoming so problem. Because last minute your father will go and do something, you have to go and swear and have David. You go up and down, so that's the issue. The name on it will be different from your birth, uh, your school certificate, and maybe your document. Especially now that nurses are traveling, you find out that even if you omit. Your name, my name like this, Hager, H A, two genes. Even if you omit one gene, it's not the same as the one you have on your certificates. And I just spell the Hager H I. Mine is A A R. I just make it A I. Uh -huh. So that is the situation with the birth set. That's the situation. But I know biometric, you can do it anywhere, provided you have the information. You pay so for I it. Don't know. I don't know. So maybe I'll find out more if there is any change. But the group said they did their investigation and then you can do it anywhere. And Mr. let's Peter, take my hand has been up. Can I I'm, I'm, yes, I've been calling you. I know my you are not my so all those that your hands are up. Are you a group member? So you can no, talk. I'm not. I wanted to contribute. All right. So contribute. You are the last person. Yeah, with my experience, what I realized was if you go to do it at another place, the person who is doing it for you, if he has a contact with that place you were born, what they usually take from that place is their code and the serial number. So if he's able to get those things, he will do it for you. But if he's not able to, he will ask you to go back. 
because okay. that is that they, 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 they are taking their records they have okay. their Syria, maybe they are on number 30 and you have gone to a different place like in Tampa to go and do it if you were born as a Wenchi, he will contact Wenchi and find out what is the next Syria number then it's 31 then he will now give it to you so that another person will not go to Wenchi and be giving 31 as well Yes, and that is where the situation is. Maybe if you're, yeah. somebody is going to do it for you, for example, you are traveling, you are in a hurry. Oh, they give me in a hospital. You you understand? Or maybe you yeah. need it to go for an interview. You won't want. You don't want to fo follow the normal process. So maybe that is where the complication or the problem. Yes, sister. Hello, sister. And yes, sister, please. I'm, I'm a group member. I just uh, called someone to make a confirmation. He okay. said with the um, birth certificate, as my, uh, my sister just said, if they know the code of that um, district or the region, or if he knows somebody there, he can call the person and ask the person. But if he doesn't have, or if he doesn't know anybody there, you have to change your place of birth. But if you know somebody that you can call, call the person and um, ask of the code and they will do it for you so that you can get it at where the place of birth that's um, where they gave birth to you. But if he doesn't know anybody there for that one, you have to change, change your place of birth. Okay, that so is I say, it's the same thing that we are all saying. It, it's about the code. They're yes. getting the code of your place. If they can't get it, either you go back. Hello, sister. Sister, yeah. Hello, sister. 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 No matter how the process you've passed through, it will not come as early as possible because nowadays people need the certificate. So the time that is supposed to come, you have to pay an amount. That's the issue we have in this system. Hello, sister. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Hello, Hello, sister. sister. Hello, sister. Yes. yes. Hello. I wanted to talk about the code. The code. When, yes, when you the open code. the ASC book, the post later column, usually when they are doing their birth certificate, they write the code there. There's a, a, a column for it. So maybe like the new ANC book. Mm -hmm. okay. When you get to the uh, post later column, there's a column for uh, birth registration. And then usually when when, uh, when they want to go for a birth certificate, you write the name they intend for that. That's why it's not helping today. Please, Hello? the person who is talking, we, uh, we can hear you now. Ah, okay. Sister, I'm saying that hmm. with the new A and C book, eh, usually hmm. we we are the facility. Sometimes they bring their air, they bring their book, and then we go and do the registration for them. And it has a column for birth registration, where you write the, the name of the parents and the name they intend giving to the child, the sex, the date she was delivered, like the details that they will need on the registration. Uh, so when you take it for registration, the one who does the registration also puts a number, the registration number there for you, uh -huh, so that. It can so be the, easily code, the code the code is on the A in C card. That is what you're saying. Yes, yes. So the uh, so I think the issue is about the code. Hello, sister. The issue is about the code. You sister. getting the code for them to do Please, it for you. The last person who is on the line, <laughs> sister, please with the code. I want to make a contribution. Who has the code? I'm a yes, only girl, eleven member. Um, okay. Sister, please, I have two friends at the uh, birth and death registration. They are officers. And I asked both of them. My sister had an issue with her birth certificate. 
So I asked them, me myself, I was born at no, the hospital. But I had to do my at Mampon because that time that was where I had admission, Mampon MT. So I had to do my at Mampon. They took all the details from me and did my at Mampon. So I asked them if it could be possible. And the second officer told me that normally what they do is wherever you are born, when they take the information, they take the records to the region. And then the region will be, they place them into the various facilities, the facility which you were born, to confirm that you were actually born at that facility. And if they have the confirmation that as soon as you were born at this facility, then they will give them the go ahead to prepare your birth certificate for you. So then the code that they have at their facility the code that were, was given to you when you were born, they will give them the code and everything that you need to for them to proceed with your birth certificate. Then they will do it for you. So with this, I know you can do it at every everywhere you want to do it. With the fact that you have all your information being correct, if you have all the information being correct, they will confirm from the hospital which you were born. Then they will proceed and do your birth certificate for you. Thank you. What about Thank the home you. delivery? Those who are delivered in the house. Uh, but in the house, it's not, it's not in the same district. When you deliver in the house, you are not doing it for the first time. You go to where you were, you, 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 you were uh, the, the district that you were delivered. Then you go and do the birth set. Yes, so we, not, we are when, not only talking about the hospital. We are talking about right. the district. Yes, so when you are right. delivered in the house, that is why you are supposed to go to the hospital after delivery. After you are you delivered in the house, you have to go back to the hospital so that they also take their records. So that when you get to the birth and death, they will require some um reports and other staff from the hospital so that you'll be able to provide them with those staff. So what if even you are born in the house uh, after everything, you are supposed to go back to the hospital for them to also continue so that you get so those you records for the death. Hello, sister. Please, I want to say something. Please, all please. questions should be channeled to the chat box now so that we can pick the next group, please. The last person is Christian. Then all questions should be channeled to the chat box. So I have a question, please. To the chat box, please. So that we can pick the next group. Then I'll follow from there. Please, um, group two, all questions in the chat box, I'm following from there. So the last person I'm picking is Christian. Christy. And that is all oh, the rest. Okay, please. Sister, please. Sister, please. My my contribution is that now they have stored limbs in all hospitals. They are starting. They started from our hospital. These limbs, when the child is born, they do birth set and Ghana card immediately for the child. You can have the child's name, maybe Kojo. The baby is born today, today is Sunday. So if they use the father's um son name. Oh, network. So maybe Kojo, that is what is happening. Ghana card, we do the Ghana card and then birth set for the baby today. So if the baby is born today, they will do it for the baby. Even when the baby is coming to take the BCG and polio, oh, they will still give baby card. They'll give card to the babies like the way they give hospital number to all mothers. They are now giving baby, baby to a card. So wherever you go, when you even deliver, uh, maybe you want to travel, you deliver baby today, they give baby BCG or polio today. When they give baby the card, you, yeah, you want her to travel to Navrongo. When you go to Navrongo, your baby's name and your name is running through all the system. So when you go to Navrongo, you want to change the name for the baby. When the, the person there click on the baby's name, every information will be displayed. And then whatever name you want to change, it will be changed. So this is what we are doing right now in our hospital. And they say it's going to take effect all over. So for instance, those who have gone to ANC at Accra and they came here and deliver, they have already made Ghana, they have already made a card for them. So when they come here, we cannot do a new card for them. They are already in the system. So this is what they are doing for now. So midwife Which is doing Ghana card. So. I'm a midwife, I'm at Postnata. I'm doing Tata Municipal Hospital. I did Ghana card and birth card for a lot of people. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank Hello, you very sister. much. Group, group, Hello, sister. Group. Hello. Um, please, can we channel all questions so that we can pick group 13, please? 
All questions, all questions. All questions, if not, last person, Christian, the last contribution, then we will channel everything into the chat yes. box. Yeah, what the lady just said uh, is to which we upper west also have started this month. The the lamb issue. Now the registration, uh, the moment you are born, they'll give you a, a, a code, they register you a code nationwide. <laughs> Any place that you go in Ghana, when they they click in your, your formation, your formation is there, your health issue, everything, your diagnosis, or anything that they have done on you in the hospital is already stored in the system. So what the lady said, no, upper west also have started this this month. All right. Okay, th please, I'm following from the chat box, so group uh, 12. Group 13, please, the person will be project, uh, presenting, please put up your hands so that I can unmute you. Thank you very much. Elizabeth. Yes, I'm Good morning. Good morning. Okay, good luck. Thank you, sister. Please, we are group 13 and we are presenting on postnatal examination of the mother. Objectives. At the end of our presentation, we will be able to know what the postpartum period is. Two, assessment of the postpartum mother. Three, areas of emphasis during the assessment and for complications. Definition. The World Health Organization described the postnatal as a period beginning immediately after the birth of the baby and extends up to six weeks after birth. So, we have an acronym for the areas of assessment during the postnatal period, and it is bubbly heat, the B for breast, the U for uterus, the B for bladder, another B for bowel, the L for lochia, the E for episiotomy, the H for hormone sign, and E for emotional status. As we know, the postnatal period consists of three periods. That is the immediate postnatal, the early postnatal, and the late postnatal. The immediate covers the first 24 hours, the early after 24 hours of delivery to the first seven days. And the late period is after the first week to the six weeks after delivery. So the areas of assessment, we first go to the breast. Please, the one projecting. Let's proceed. Let me go to the breast during postnatal or postpartum. What we do under the breast is we examine the breast. We check for whether it's soft or hard. Ideally, in every postnatal woman, the breast should be soft. It shouldn't be hardened. You educate the woman on how to put the baby to breast. That is proper position and attachment of the baby to breast. You also teach the mother method to prevent and treat breast engorgement. You encourage the mother to wear a proper bra. The nipple should be soft, pliable, and intact. Then you inform the mother that when she see any abnormal findings like cracked nipple, breast engorgement, bloody nipple discharge, any palpable mass, she should report to the facility. We can see from our picture that the normal breast is soft and is pliable, and the engorged breast is full, hard, and painful. So please let's go. We move on to the uterus. During postnatal examination, we check the consistency, the size and height of the uterus. Immediately after delivery, the uterus should be hard. That means it is well contracted. So when you examine the woman in the power plate to see whether the uterus is soft or boggy, you rub the abdomen to make sure the uterus becomes hard and well contracted. Then you teach the mother on how to 
wrap the uterus by herself. And we encourage the woman to put the baby to breast and void frequently. After delivery, that's the for, for the first 24 hours, the uterus is at the level of the umbilicus. It descends one cm every day. So by the third day, the fundus should no longer be palpated. Whenever you are measuring the fundal height, you make sure that there is no full bladder. As we know, full bladder will interfere with the measurement. Thank you. We move on to the bladder. You ask the woman the voiding pattern. Is she able to pass urine? Normally, after delivery, when they are urinating, they will feel some slight pain. So you inform the mother that this is normal. The reason why she's experiencing the pain may be due to the bruising and swelling that occurs during labor, especially if the mother was being catheterized. She is likely to experience small pain during urination. So you encourage her to urinate frequently as full bladder can cause some involution and can cause uterine action. Let's go on to the bowel. You ask the woman whether she's been able to resume bowel or has been able to pass flatus or not. Then you tell her after delivery, she can experience diarrhea, constipation, speaker incontinence and any. So if she experienced any of these minor disorders after delivery, how she's going to manage it? If it's constipation, you educate her to take in more fluids, eat more fruit to prevent her from getting further complications such as hemorrhoids. And you explain to her why she is experiencing the constipation as it can be due to changes in hormones, the pelvic floor tissues, and uterine contractions. Let's move on. So we move on to the look here. The look here, we have the type, amount, clot, and order. Immediately after delivery, we have lochia rubra. That is from the first day to the third day. And the color is dark or bright red. It flows like a heavy period. There is a small clot and it is mild. We have a period of cramping that is mild pain. We move on to the lochia serosa. That is the second stage of the lochia. It is pinkish brown in color. It is less bloody and more watery. It lasts from four to 12 days. The flow is moderate, less clotting or no clot. Lochia arba, that is the last stage of the lochia. You can expect yellowish white discharge, little or no blood, light flow or spotting. It lasts from about 12 days to six weeks and there is no clot. So you educate the woman the amount of lochia, whether it's heavy, whether it's scanty, whether it's moderate. Then you teach her proper hygienic technique. That is proper wiping. And they need to change her part frequently and to report when there is heavy bleeding, when the lochia is offensive, when there is a, the amount is more than that of a period. Let's say maybe even the rubra stage and the amount of blood that she's experienced is more than enough. You tell her to report for any abnormality or any danger sign in the local period. Let's proceed. Episiotomy. You educate the woman when she had episiotomy, laceration or bruises, whether it's healing, whether it's gape. During your postnatal examination, you examine the episiotomy wound. Then you educate her to keep the place clean and dry, to change the part frequently. When you see any difficulty or any sign of infection, you also educate her on it. Homan sign. You check whether Homan sign is present or not. When we talk of Homan sign, it is a screening test too, used to check for deep vein thrombosis of the calf. It is sometimes called doxiflexion sign. The patient lies in the supine position and the examiner lifts the affected leg and rapidly doxiflexes the patient's foot with the knee extended. 
This maneuver is repeated with the patient's knee flex while the examiner simultaneously palpates the calf. Homan sign is positive if pain is occurring upon the deflection of the foot with the knee extended and flexed, indicating deep vein thrombosis. So during postnatal examination, we check whether Homan sign is present or not. And as I've explained earlier, if there is pain when the knee is doxiflex, that shows that there is a sign of deep vein thrombosis. So you educate her on it. Then the emotional status of the mother. During postnatal period, the mothers go through a lot of emotional changes. So it is our duty as a midwife to educate the mother. You know, the immediate postpartum period is an emotional roller coaster. And almost any emotion may be observed. They may also be exhausted and need sleep and rest to restore their bodies. You know, as we did in, uh, I think, midwifery theories, during the postnatal period, we go through three psychological adaptations by Ruva Rubin in 1961. And the Stages or the phases are the taking in phase, the taking on phase, and the letting go phase. So you know in the taking in phase, the mother focus on her own needs. She is dependent. Her focus is on the food or the nutritional needs and rest. So during that stage, we as a midwife, we have to educate the woman on how to go through that stage. You know, when we go to the taking hold phase two, the mother focused on the baby, neglecting her own needs. During that stage, the mother becomes independent and autonomous. It lasts for a period of three days to 10 days. Then during the letting go phase, the mother establishes new identity to focus on the family. So you as a midwife, during postnatal examination, you have to assess the mother's emotional status to be able to educate her to fed to prevent further complications such as postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis. Thank you. Then we educate the mother on guidance and instruction prior to discharge. You have to educate the mother, you have to educate the baby and the relation to others. For the mother, you can educate her on her nutritional needs, you can educate her on good personal hygiene, you can educate her uh, on the need to have enough rest and sleep, exercises like pelvic floor exercise and early ambulation to help her gain healthy, to be able to take care of the baby. Then you educate the mother on how to take care of the baby, provision of warm, prevention of infection, immunization. Then you also educate the relative, that the husband, partner, in-laws on how to take care of the mother as she goes through the postpartum period to give her psychologically stable and to be able to help her pass through the postnatal period safely. So as a duty of a midwife or during the postnatal examination, we guide them and we educate them how to discharge. Then we come to complications in postnatal. We have peripheral infection, mastitis, sub-involution, postpartum depression, postpartum hemorrhage, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Please, this is our reference. We are done. Please, any question?
Hello. 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 Hey, make us so be anti. Hello. The person who was present. Hello. Hello. Please, you can unmute yourself. Hi, 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 I don't want you to interrupt. All right, so Elizabeth Sapon. Yes, sister. Please, what are you doing the end of semester practical? Next two weeks. Next two weeks. Next two weeks. Yes, sister. So it means. Yes, so please, then. I beg you, I learned you don't have any class again, or? We have. Are you Just sure? We have, yes. Mm -hmm. What time? Have to... Day 15. We have. We have two classes. And I miss them. Now, please. At what time? At what time? 9.15. Hello? 9.15. I wanted to pick group four. So that next week we'll be left with only five group. Then we call it a... Is it possible? No. Or we should that. close. We will eat Thank into that. the next... Okay, I hear. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Any question, Elizabeth? Okay, Dockers, your hands is up. Okay. Yes, sister. All right. Sister, please, I wanted to add something to uh, the education that we give to the baby too. You can tell the mother to check if she sees any danger sign, like if the baby is convulsing, heart bleeding, if the baby is uh, vomiting, excessive vomiting and other things. So that one too, you tell the mother about it, about the baby. Thank you. Okay, patient. Okay, with the breast examination, even, is, even though it's important to look for the abnormalities, I think it's very important to also check if uh, breastfeeding has been established. So that it, it, through, the, through that, you'll be able to give your education. Thank you. You. Christina, please. I let you don't have any class. Oh, oh. Uh, we have. Oh. We have principles we have. and a biology. We do classes. Okay, I know. Classes. It's okay. I'm closing. Patient. <laughs> okay, for Christina. Yo, no, sister, sister, please. I uh, my is a question, and I'm a confused. Uh, I'm in a state of confusion. A client delivered at my place, and about three months ago, uh, about three months ago, she came back complaining of severe incisional. Uh, the where we give the episiotomy, she is complaining that it's still pain in her. So I don't know the kind of management we should give again. Please, can you kindly help out? Thank you. Hello? Yes, sister. Hello? Please, the person who asked the question, please come again. There was so much noise. Please, can you meet yourself? The person who asked the question, Christina. Hello? Yes, sister. Come again with the question. Yes, sister. 
Yeah, sister, please. I, I said that uh, a client delivered at my place three months ago, and recently she came back that she's still having pain at where we give the episiotomy. So I want to find out from the class if there is a, a, some management that we can give to her. Well, she's complaining bitterly. I don't know. Thank you. And did, you did you do your examination? When a client complained, did you do your examination? Sister, actually, she has been calling from the house and complaining. I asked her to come to bed. Sister, I asked her to come, but up to now, she has not come. She has been calling me always, complaining so, of so the it, institution, so, that place. So uh, that, one, that, one, that one, you because you have not done your examination, you cannot base on the person complaining on phone and said we should manage her. No, that is wrong. It might be something else. Are you with me? It might be something yes, else. So at least tell the person to come to the hospital, do your sparkloma examination and find what is happening. Maybe, I don't know the kind of epitotomy that was given. Maybe there is a suturing joining one or two things together. Are you with me? Christina, yes, I'll ask you all. Next week, let me write your name down, Faustina. Is it Quenza? I'm writing your name. The next week, I'll ask Quenza. you. Yes, follow up to the client. Then when you follow up and do your okay. examination, then we will know what is happening. She cannot just stay in the house and be complain. I'm looking at maybe C3 between two things has happened. Are you with me? All right. So next week we will find out before you will answer your question. Yes, sister. So sister, when it comes, uh... okay. Do, sister, so in case do... it is a switching problem, this case three months ago. Do your, you do? do your uh, because even three months the person has passed the period. The period is a period of six weeks. So do your investigation. If we find out, we want to know. People has the perception. It may be a perception problem and there is nothing there. That is why I don't want to answer you. I want you to do your examination first and then we look at the way forward. Are you with me? It may be psychological. It may be sitting between two or th uh, uh, two organs. So I don't want to be quick to answer the question. It's for Sina with me. Okay, Ellen. Hello, sister. Please, yes. I would like them to go over um, the hormone signs for me. My nature took me out. I, I didn't get it all. Thank you. Hello, please project where the hormone signs and let me explain it to her. When we talk of the hormone sign, it's a sign you used to check for different thrombosis of the calf. It is sometimes called doxiflexion sign. The patient is meant to lie in the supine position. Then the examiner, the midwife, or the nurse lift the affected leg and rapidly doxiflexes the patient's foot with the knee extended. This maneuver is repeated with the patient's knee flexed while the midwife simultaneously palpate the calf. So if you palpate the calf and there is pain, it means hormone sign is positive. That means there is an indication of deep vein thrombosis. Please, do you get it now? Yes, please. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Welcome. Okay. Kasim. 
Please, I think it's time. Say you have another class. So, oh, I don't want to get into that class. Hasim. Sister, when mine is contribution, I want to talk about when they are giving the health education to the mother, I think the relatives, especially the mother-in-law and husband should be included because in most situations, they are the difficult part, especially when we give them episiotomy and they go home. The mother-in-law insists that they sit on hot uh, water. So if we give them medicate the, the mother-in-laws and then the significant caretakers, the education, it will be much better. That's what I want to add up. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you all very much. Um, group three, well done. But my problem is still with your interest referencing and then how you are using your AP. Please go to your reference. So please go and work on your interest reference. And remember, any idea that you pick, you need to reference the person the same way, images. Where you pick the image from, you need to reference the person. And you remember I said, your online article referencing is wrong. So when you go for the APA, look at the online referencing for articles and journals. At the same time, you are not supposed, the book should not be more than 10 years. And articles and journals should not be more than five years. So please take notes and do that corrections. Okay. Thank you very much. We will continue next week. Midwife, save life. Bye-bye. Sorry for taking eight minutes of your time. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. 30 all the way. 30 all the way. Bye-bye, <laughs> sister. Bye. 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 Bye.